This is what really separates Shea's mid-range from so many players. Look at his stop. Right there. Something so subtle, you'd even peep it. Look. Because what a lot of players do is that they'll go and they'll make this bump. And they'll need to take another 1-2 after they make that bump to get up. Shea bumps, stops immediately on that right, only takes one step. And he's already in the air while Derek White is still leaning forward hoping he can be able to get a hand up. But good luck, my boy. You cooked. Bucket. Drew Holiday, one of the best defenders in the league, right? But Shea is able to deceive him by simply using pace. Watch how he delays this in and out, right? Look. I don't even think you understood it from the first watch. See it again. Look. Look how late he decides to put force into his drive. Look. And then now it occurs. Not until that ball is already right there, like damn near right off the bounce, right? And so him being so paced and so poised and so relaxed at that point in time has now kept Drew Holiday relaxed. So now, boom, he gets by, kick out, boom, to Josh, giggity, giggity, goo, and now, boom, hits that corner three. Notice Shea's eyes, right? Notice where Shea's looking. He's looking off the floor, right? He's scanning the floor. And so now, as a defender, Drew Holiday in this situation, you're not going to be as ready to guard, right, since he's scanning the floor. And now, at this point, he turns and looks down and is going to get into attack mode. If Shea came down and was just staring down, Drew Holiday, he'll be ready to go and take that first step and beat him to spots and stay in front. But since he was manipulating that pace, boom, and manipulating the eyes as well, he was able to get downhill to the rim. And like I said, that underhand finish. Derek White stepping over. Look, notice how late he goes and decides to put force into his move, right? He's taking that step. He's still relaxed. And then he's already going once that foot is already fully down. Because what a lot of people usually do in these situations, right? is that when it comes down to these tweens, they make that dribble and they make that step aggressive, right? But Shea is able to keep both of those relaxed, right? So where that foot is there, and once that foot is planted, all he has to do is really lift that heel kind of, and then just boom, get into a sprint. And now he's right by Derek White, underhand lay once again. How come? Poor Zingas on the help. He understands that they gonna have a footer in this back line, and they're going to make sure they're ready to help because they're going to have a non-shooter. So he's just going quick finishes underhand this whole time, right? Boom, that's the second one. Shea would tell him, this is a mismatch, right? We got a mismatch down low, right? Everybody knows it. So look, notice how they're going to guard it. Look at this coach. Boom, many things. Get wide, get big as a help defender, right? You see him put his hands out wide, get big, right? Tell him Wiggins, right? You got Shea with his hand right here pointing to Isaiah Joe to come over on help in case the drive. But guess what the fuck could take all that shit out the goddamn window, right? A little bit of contact and some height, right? Ain't gonna shoot over the top and see nobody. So that defensive scheme does not fucking matter, right? Just shoot over the top. That's a bucket. Notice Tatum's footwork, right? On his catch. He caught already in a split. Now, why did he catch in a split though, right? The importance is why he caught in a split. And this split maximizes his efficiency in movement, right? So look, this is how you be efficient in movement. Catch on a split, right? He sees the defender already closes up tight, right? And so what a lot of people would do is that they'll catch in the split, bring that right foot forward. He keeps that right foot back. And this efficiency in movement and actually making the read on his defender allows him to get the step on the defender because he just has to now put force into the ground and take that step and now he's right by Wiggins right he played up now I get into the middle get a gap Horford Horford to Hauser pump fake by Hauser boom shot gets up knock down right that little thing right there that only happens though if you make the read trying to go boom behind the back he gets nowhere Isaiah Joe get the ball to SGA right and now we finally gets the ball you should have been gotten the rock because what he's about to do now working Sam Hauser downhill and so now working them downhill, once you make a change of direction, the angles that he's going to go to recover is going to be in that same line. So he's going to end up dropping back instead of going laterally and beating him to a spot because he thinks he's going to the rim. So now pull up while he's going back over the top. Don't even see that hand for real. Bucket. The reason why Shea gets past so many goddamn players is because he does this right here. Peep. He gets skinny. Watch his body. Look. Understand the dynamics of his frame right here, right? Left shoulder rotates. That's torque. That's rotation, right? Now, instead of going in with his shoulders squared, he's now turning and getting thinner, leading with one shoulder and putting the other back. While his base is unilateral, he's taking steps. He's sprinting, right? So now as that right foot steps, that left shoulder leans, and now he's almost like a paper going through a crack in the door, 
right? So now he's just literally making his body as thin as it possibly can be to get past Jalen Brown and get past Cornette and get straight to the rim, underhand lay because J Jalen Brown is trying to go and block that. Watch Jason Tatum, right? Look at Jason Tatum. Watch him. Look. I don't think y'all understand this. In basketball, you can wait and understand why you must wait. As soon as he makes his catch, look at the spacing on the floor. Chris Porzingis up here, Holiday, Brown, Cornette. The spacing is atrocious. Nobody is focused and they're trying to milk the clock a little bit. You could wait, right? And notice what he waits until. Look. Drew Holiday is now making his way through. Porzingis is now already leaving. You got help defenders who are not able just to sit there and just hone in on what he's doing as a ball handler, right? So now he's able to get down, boom, walk, walk Shea down, get to his spots, Shea fouls. Now I'm able to have a lane and get to the rim and make a play. You need to think of a defender on this perspective, right? So you see Shea go and get into the paint, touch the paint once, bring the ball right back out, right? And so as a defender, you see Drew literally standing. He's not in his base. Right? You don't think he's going to go and attack again, but guess what? Right, He's now mimicking the base of Drew, facing up again, and he's attacking again and hit him with another delayed tween. <laughs> like, this shit is tough. But like, he's manipulating him damn near the same way every time, and it's continually, it's continuously working. Right? Because he's tall here, drops that, base is there, foot's already planted. Now I get by. Drew is out of his base. Now he's a step late. Lay right there with the right. It's tough. What I'd like to see Shea improve on is that Shea's, what, 6'7", probably like 205. He may be listed as like 195, but he's really probably like 205 now, 210 even. And so being at that size, 6'6", 6'7", 210 maybe, I can see Shea hanging with, hanging with some like Tatum and Jalen Brown if they really try to post him up if he wants to hold his own. Then seeing smaller players do it. It's just a, it's a mindset. It's a mentality thing, right? You can always try to gamble and get the steal and now leave lanes for twos like he does right here. Or you can decide under, and understand that when it comes down to really good players like Tatum and Brown, I can't just gamble on steals because they're going to capitalize on it. Because I understand what Tatum did in this situation. He made, a, he made a really good, probably instinctive play, right? To where he's got this switch on to Shea. And notice where he's going to catch the ball and where it's going to end up being after the catch, right? Caught it here. It only, it only stayed in front of his frame. He did not catch it and bring it back to his side like this, right? He only caught it. Kept it here, and now he just kept it in front, and now he got to the rim. So now he, Shea can't even reach that ball no more. Tatum has a lane, got that dunk. You see Tatum here, right? Tatum and Pritchard pick and roll. The reason why Tatum is so far out on this pick and roll is because he doesn't know how they're going to guard this. This is the first guard-guard pick and roll he's had all game, right? And so why would he try to go into this action and think, go be aggressive and attack when he doesn't even know what to read? So what he's going to do is operate in space so then he can buy himself time to be able to read what needs to be read, right? And so now, boom, hard hedge by Isaiah Joe. Now I can throw the slip to Pritchard, right? What were they going to do on this action? He didn't know to start. They could have doubled. They could have did a hard hedge like they did, or they could have switched. Who knows, right? But that's why that space is so vital. So now he hits Pritchard. Chris Stapps, instead of sitting at the three-point line, decides to cut because no one in the paint is going to be able to stop his layup. Now, boom, right there, they get that too. The key to allowing a spin move to work, though, is this step that you're taking before you make that spin, right? Which is this. That has to be a real stride to where it's selling the drive going that direction. And now the defender will bite on that and continue to move that direction and will leave the other direction open. It just starts, make, starts with you making sure that your moves aren't premeditated and you actually go make a move and you're going to sell the other way look before you go and attack any mismatch you got to understand one thing and that's how is team how is the team going to guard you with that mismatch right Shea with Chris Stapps right and so instead of just going immediately attack right now notice who he's looking at Pritchard he's staring down Pritchard what is he going to do he ends up doubling what does Shea do I shoot right now because Chris Stapps has dropped back while I relaxed and brought that ball back to the three-point line. So now he just shoots out over the top. He's already two for two from three. So what's going to happen? Boom, drops that third. This is a timely attack. Cerebral attacks, like I've been telling y'all this whole time. Look, notice Tatum. This is why setting good screens is vital. Look, boom, back screen. He can't get through that shit, right? So now you're forcing a mismatch. Now that you force a mismatch, you're forcing help. Right, because they understand that we don't want this matchup to occur and want him to attack this matchup. So now Lou Dort is playing help. Now Derek White is on the perimeter. 
he got Derek White open off of setting a good screen, right? They they already done made the switch, but that over help off of setting a good screen got Derek White open for a three. He even tried to go and contest that, but unbothered bucket. 